Let me just uh, quickly endorse those DFN dinners. Uh, that is uh, one of the most amazing mission organisations and operations that I've ever seen in my lifetime, and Carolyn and I are, are fully invested. We sponsor some things with them ourselves, and so come along on that night. Um, be informed and uh, be encouraged, and let's get behind Jonathan and Kate and this amazing thing that they're doing. The title of today's talk, we're going through songs, uh, What Song Are You Singing? And today's song is Don't Worry, Be Happy. It's a great little song, we'll come to it shortly. But most of us at some point in life find ourselves struggling with anxious thoughts. Is there anyone else here this morning who struggle at times with anxious thoughts, anxiety? You find yourself waking up in the middle of the night and you can't get back to sleep because something keeps playing over. And psychologists tell us that there are usually four things that make us anxious. The first one is that we get anxious over what we don't have. We don't have, we compare ourselves or there's something our heart desires and we're unable to have it, so that provides anxiety. The second thing that provides anxiety is what might happen in the future. We're thinking, gee, how's that going to work out? And we have some anxiety around that. Thirdly, we get anxious about what could have been. Uh, we have a missed opportunity or we've made a poor decision and so we've missed out on some stuff and so we get anxious about what might have been. And then the fourth area we get anxious about is what we did wrong. What we did wrong. We have some regret over some stuff and that provides anxiety. For myself, my anxious thoughts usually gather around number two. What might happen in the future? Does anyone else wonder about that sometimes and find themselves anxious about what might happen? feeling anxious about the future. And I find when my mind is in neutral, when I'm driving the car or when I'm mowing the lawn or walking the dog, at those times I find myself worrying about things that haven't happened yet, things that are in my future. I find myself worrying and being anxious about, will I be able to pay those bills when they come? Will I be able to recover from my health issues? Will I have the ability to do the things that I said I would do that are coming up and I'm feeling anxious about it because I'm not quite sure I can do what I said I would do? Will I be able to resist temptation? Will I be successful in life? Those sort of things to me are to do with the future and they provide anxiety in my world. As though, well, though, I realize sometimes that I'm becoming anxious about things that are happening immediately in my world. I remember a number of years ago, we hired a car in Italy for five of us and our luggage. We thought we were just hiring an ordinary car, but it turned out that the car was a small minibus, a Fiat Ducato. And so here we are in the middle of Italy and Switzerland and these winding, narrow roads, and oftentimes driving this busser around, it was like we had millimeters either side, and my anxiety levels were, were through the roof. Negotiating Italy's roads were, were quite anxious for me. Or saying yes, I say yes sometimes to a speaking opportunity and then realising it's totally outside of my experience and totally outside of my comfort zone. And it's coming up and so I'll be thinking about that coming up. I just feel anxious about that thing. I, I don't feel like I can do it. And then having the anxious feelings for weeks leading up to that event or, or lying on a hospital gurney has happened a couple of times in the last couple of years, waiting for surgery to happen, thinking of all the things that can go wrong with the surgery or with the anaesthetists and wondering how things are going to go. Or re receiving an unexpected bill that's a significant amount of money and suddenly the anxiety increases around those things. They're some of the things that trigger anxiety in my world. Perhaps they also trigger anxiety in your world. Anxiety is currently the most common mental issue that people wrestle with in Australia. The most common issue. The statistics from 2020 to 2022 show a 25% increase in people wrestling with anxiety. During that time we had COVID, which saw a dramatic increase in how anxious people were with its enforced isolation and its, the resulting loneliness, with its shutting down of workplaces and, and interaction with people, its fear of death or infection and its polarisation of pro-vaccine and anti-vaccine people, plus the financial stress that families and businesses and individuals came under. Then we had in this region also, at the end of that time, record-breaking floods in its aftermath of homelessness and house repairs and destruction that went on. 
if you're anything like me, it only has to start raining really heavy and I feel my anxiety levels beginning to rise up and I think, is, it, is the rain going to stop? Is it going to flood again? How much rain have we actually had? What's going to happen? And this thing about the future, get, I'd get anxious in my world. Or what about just watching the nightly news? How, how does that help our anxiety in this world? We live in a, an amazing part of the world called Australia and we have relatively peace and, and quiet here for most of us. But you put on the news of a night time and there's wars. Our, our planet has wars raging in it and bombings and mass shootings and murders and earthquakes and tsunamis and the scammers that are, are rife and there's road accidents and there's domestic violence and there's workplace accidents and there's political turmoil. And we live in a place you turn the television on and you, only, you have to feel anxious seeing all that stuff you think is this going to have an effect on us is it going to have an effect on our world from 2020 to 2022 in australia recent research showed that one in five or 20 percent of our population currently struggle with significant anxiety one one person in every five struggle with significant anxiety 20 people out of every hundred struggling with significant anxiety except for young women aged 15 to 24 in young women aged 15 to 24 40 percent of them struggle with anxiety and with anxious thoughts isn't that amazing Uh, why aren't people asking some questions around this so what song are we singing today the song that we are singing speaks to (coughs) this whole issue of worry and anxiety It was written in 1988 by a fellow by the name of Bobby McFerrin. I think we've got a picture of Bobby up there, Levi. He was a 38-year-old black American. He was the son of a Baptist minister. And this song, when it was released, reached number one in the USA and (coughs) reached number one in Australia as well. And actually displaced Guns N' Roses' uh, song, Sweet Child of Mine, displaced that from the number one spot. We're going to have a listen to this. There'll be a link to it in the bio for those watching afterwards. And uh, this is my personal, my favourite version of this particular song. Let's roll that. Thank you, Levi. Don't worry, be happy. Yeah. We actually didn't see it on the bottom of the screen there because it was cut off, but that was recorded right around the world from all different nations and nationalities somehow put together. So... Amazing, that's my favourite version of the song. But in the 60s and 70s, posters were a thing. Anyone here old enough to remember posters? You go into shops and there'd be numbers and numbers of posters that were there that you could buy. And often the poster would have a picture or a pretty drawing on there as background. And then they'd have some sort of inspirational words that were there that you put on your wall to help remind you that you wanted to do something. There were all sorts of posters. Keep on trucking was one that we'd see around the place. And uh, sort of saying, keep going, don't give up. And that was like the 60s sort of iconic image from there. Another one was, have a good day. Uh, was a poster. Uh, Never stop growing was another poster you could see at the time. And then one one day, Bobby McFerrin saw in a musician friend's house this, uh, this poster which said, don't worry, be happy. And it struck him that there was something in there that resonated in his heart, resonated in his upbringing as the son of a Baptist minister, resonated with something that was in the Bible. The original song was a cappella. There were no instruments in the original, which was really unusual for the day. But at the 1989 Grammy Festival, Grammy Awards, it won Song of the Year, it won Artist of the Year, and it won Album of the Year, which was highly unusual for a song that had no voc- uh, only had vocals in it, no instruments. And the reason I think it was so loved was apart from its catchy little tune, but more than that, it was its simple message of choosing hope and happiness over worry, anxiety and fear. It's interesting that McFarren didn't write this song for a Christian audience, even though he was a follower of Jesus. What he does say is that he allows his Christian faith to permeate everything he does tries to let his Christian faith come through. His belief in Jesus and his understanding of the Bible has helped shape this song and its lyrics. And that's interesting because the Bible is not silent on the issue of anxiety and worry. It has a lot to say. In Matthew chapter 6, Jesus himself, in verses 25 and 27, Jesus says this. He says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life. Do not worry about your life. I mean, are we, do we take the words of Jesus seriously? 
How many of us do worry about our life? We worry about this and we worry about that. But Jesus says, no, do not worry about your life. Do not worry about what you will eat or drink or where, what you will wear, where you're going to go, where you're going to live. Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And the answer is no, they can't. The, the more you worry, it's not going to add to your life. If anything, it might subtract from your life. Now, I want you to think of something that is causing you anxiety at the moment, something that provides you that you worry about a little bit, something that keeps you perhaps awake at night. And I want you to imagine right now that you have the opportunity to sit down face to face with Jesus and tell him about it. Wouldn't that be amazing? Afternoon tea with Jesus. He wants to hear how you're going. He wants to hear what you're worried about. What provides anxiety in the world? What's, your, what's uncertainty? What, what provides fear in your world? And you can pour your heart out to Jesus. And you can tell him your fears and tell him your failures. You can tell him your struggles. You can tell him your disappointments. And after you have finished, you can wait and he will give you a response. Now, the Bible is interesting here. It says Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so I, I can, with fair amount of um, you know, certainty, I can tell you his response today will be the same as his response was 2,000 years ago. When this was written, he doesn't change. And imagine Jesus in front of you, and he's standing in front of you, and he puts his hand on your shoulder, and he looks you in the eyes. And here are the words he says, don't worry about your life, Isaac. Don't worry. Don't worry about your life, Carolyn. Don't worry about your life, Julie. Don't worry about your life, Sharon. Here's the words of Jesus. And you were thinking that he might have some other advice about how to get out of this or how to do that. But no, he just puts his hand on your shoulder and says, don't worry, you'll be fine. Things will work out. You mightn't have the latest fashion. You mightn't have the latest gadgets. You mightn't eat at the best restaurants. It's going to be okay. Instead, I, I want you to spend your energy and your efforts on today things and not tomorrow things, on today things. Eugene Peterson, in his paraphrase, The Message, expresses the words of Jesus from the passage that we've looked at there and a few verses onwards. He expresses them this way. Has anyone by fussing in front of the mirror ever gotten, ever gotten taller by so much as an inch? All this time and money wasted on fashion. Do you think it makes that much difference? Instead of looking at the fashions, walk out into the fields and look at the wildflowers. They never primp or shop, but have you ever seen colour and design quite like it? The ten best dressed men and women in the country look shabby alongside them. If God gives such attention to the appearance of wildflowers, don't you think he'll attend to you? Take pride in you, do his best for you, I'm trying to here to get you to relax, to not be preoccupied with getting. People who don't know God and the way he works fuss over these things. But you know both God and how he works. Don't worry. Don't worry about missing out. You'll find all your everyday human concerns will be met. Give your entire attention to what God is doing right now and don't get worked up about what may or may not happen tomorrow. God will help you deal with whatever hard things come up when the time comes. Isn't that amazing? You gave your entire attention to what God is doing right now in your world. Your entire attention. Give it to that. Not worried about something that might happen in the future. No, give your attention to what God's doing because God will help you deal in the future with whatever hard things come up when the time comes. Oh, you're so excited about that this morning. In another place, Paul the Apostle, writing to the church at Philippi in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6, he says this, Don't worry, be anxious about anything. He's saying there's nothing that you should be worried about. There's nothing you should be anxious about. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your heart and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. What an amazing scripture verse. I think it was um, Tara actually read it to us this morning as we we're having our little prayer huddle at the start for the volunteers. Paul is saying that the antidote to anxiety is what? It's prayer. There's an antidote. If you're feeling anxious about something, then there's an antidote, Paul says here. Paul says, instead of worrying and being anxious, instead of worry, pray. Pray about these things. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all that He has already done. 
Take your eyes not on what might happen in the future, but what God has already done and blessed you with in the past. I find writing things down really, really helpful. I start by writing down a list of all the good things. And you could do this tonight, this afternoon, as some homework or in your quiet times of the morning. You can start by making a list of all the good things that you are thankful for, God's blessings in your life. You can make a list of those things because sometimes we can take our eyes off that. Can we, f- we can forget. We're so focused on what went wrong or what could go wrong or, or what we want or, or the mistakes that we've made that we forget what God, good things God has already done then read it aloud as part of your morning prayer time say lord i thank you this morning i just want to thank you right now for these things and you can read them out one after another then you can write down what you're feeling anxious about i was reading about one pastor that when he wakes up he has a notepad beside his bed and a pencil and uh, when he wakes up in the middle of night and he's anxious about something he writes it down on the piece of paper he said the act of writing it down actually then lets him i say i'll deal with that in the morning i don't have to keep thinking about it and it helps him just to place it to one side sometimes writing things down that we're anxious about removes them from this emotional fuzzy wuzzy world and places them into a hard real world and they sometimes in our imagination things are bigger than what they actually are Sometimes we write them down, things become smaller. They don't seem as big or menacing as before. What about Psalm 55 and verse 22? It says this, Cast your cares on the Lord and He will sustain you. Those things that you're worried about, those things that you're anxious about, cast them onto the Lord. Give them to Jesus. Don't keep carrying them around yourself in that that bag. The message translation for paraphrase says this, Pile your troubles on God's shoulders. He'll carry your load. He'll help you out. He'll never let good people topple in ruin. Isn't that an amazing promise, an amazing encouragement that God will actually not allow us to to ruin. He won't let you fall in a heap. He'll sustain you. He'll carry you and he'll see you through to the other side. You know, it's so easy to be pessimistic. It's easy to think that the worst will happen. Am I the only person that when something goes on, uh, he gets some, he th- immediately think of the worst. What's, going, what's happened here? You go to that negative, pessimistic place. There's a famous bush poet in Australia called John O'Brien who wrote a poem in 1990, 1919 that describes the struggles Australian farmers have with droughts and floods and fires and the pessimistic attitude that lots of farmers may have had in the past. Let me read you a couple of ex- excerpts from this, this bush poem and uh, you may recognise it. And uh, so it it jumps in here, just a couple of verses from various places. It says, If rain doesn't come this month, said Dan, and cleared his throat to speak. Ah, we'll all be ruined, said Hanrahan, if rain doesn't come this week. If we don't get three inches now or four to break this drought, we'll all be ruined, said Hanrahan, before the year is out. So he's complaining there about, you know, there's no rain. But then in God's good time, down came the rain. And all that afternoon, on iron roof and window pane, it drummed a homely tune. It pelted, pelted all day long, a singing at its work, till every heart took up that song way out to back of Burke. And every creek and bank ran over and dams filled over top. We'd all be ruined, said Hanrahan, if this rain don't stop. I could read it on, it would take about five minutes to get right through. The rain did stop and then the grass began to grow and the grass got knee high and now was the, the fire. And so the last little verse there says, There'll be bushfires for sure, me man, that will without, like, they will without a doubt. We'll all be ruined, said Henry Hand, before the year is out. <laughs> It's got this pessimistic attitude, and the, the poem captures that really But sometimes we have a Hanraham loop playing in our minds, don't we? We have this little voice that tells us it's not going to work, it's going to fail, you're going to fail, you're not a success, you'll never be a success, this isn't going to work for you, that could happen, you know, this could happen, that could happen, and this negative thing goes over, over, we'll all be ruined. Psychology Today, the magazine, American magazine of psychology, tells us that 91% of the things we worry about don't come to pass. 91, it just shows the power of worry, doesn't it? No, no, it doesn't. Tells us that 90% of the things that we worry about don't come to pass. They are false alarms. Nothing comes from them. And the remaining 9% that did come true, the outcome was better than expected in about a third of the situations. Wow. So how do we switch off worry and how do we calm our anxious thought? There's lots and lots that 
we could talk about. I'll just pick a couple of things today that help us to switch off some of those anxious thoughts, to calm our anxious minds. Here's a couple of thoughts. First one I would suggest is if you struggle with anxiety and these anxious thoughts and you find there's a loop going over in your mind like that, find a reputable Christian psychologist who can help you. Find someone who can help you to understand where your anxiety is coming from. And we'll have a number of different strategies that will be able to help you. There's no shame in seeing someone, talking to someone like that, someone who can help you professionally. Often a good psychologist is able to help you untangle something of your past that is perhaps impacting your present and help you to find some healing and some restoration in some of those areas that are impacting the way you currently do things. Find a reputable Christian psychologist. Secondly, I think you've got to work at stopping the worry train from leaving the station. Once that train gets some momentum up, once that train gets going, it's really hard to stop. But if you can stop that thing from leaving the station, then you have a good chance of not going down the worry tracks. I've got a simple mantra from Philippians that I use whenever I begin to feel anxious and worried about stuff. And it's from Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. And it's simply this, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. When I'm feeling anxious that I can't do something, uh, or that, I, that it's not going to work out. I can do this. I can do all things, not in my own strength. I can do it in Christ's strength. I can do this because Christ is giving me his strength. I can do it. I can do it. And it's like I'm punching this thing in the face. It's trying to get on top of me. But I'm, I'm going to get on top of it. This train's getting up steam. It wants to leave the station, wants to go down the worry track, wants to go down the anxiety track. I'm not, I say, no, you're not going to do that. You're not leaving the station. I can do all things through Christ Jesus. I'm not going to give in to this particular thing. It doesn't mean that I can do anything through Christ who's giving me strength. It's not saying that. It's not saying God will endorse anything we set out to do, some wild idea, some crazy idea, some crazy aspiration that we have in our mind. What Paul is saying is that whatever your circumstances that you are currently in, God will give you strength to come through to the other side. It's more accurately translated like this, I can do this thing through Christ who gives me strength. That thing that is causing you anxiety, I can do this thing. I can do this thing through Christ who gives me strength. That's my mantra as anxious thoughts come, as fear of failure tries to overwhelm me. Thank you, Jesus, for your strength. I can do this. I can do this because of Christ Jesus. I can do this. The third thing we can do is open a doorway to heaven. Revelation chapter 4 is an amazing uh, book. Revelation is amazing. I don't understand a lot of it. But here in Revelation chapter 4, I, uh, John, uh, the last surviving disciple of Jesus, who was uh, with Jesus as uh, he was trained, the last uh, remaining disciple is on the island of Patmos, and God gives him this vision. And uh, there's so much in this vision that we don't understand. I don't understand. But I see come to chapter 4, and it's a, and a vision of what's going on in heaven at this particular time. And uh, Isaac, you might get your band up just shortly. Uh, then I looked, and it says there in verse 4, Then I looked, and oh, a door, oh, uh, chapter 4, a door open into heaven. And uh, so he looks, John in the Spirit is seeing heaven, and he's seeing this door that's opening up into heaven. And uh, he sees a, a voice in my vision. He called out, John, ascend and enter heaven. Come up from that earthly place where you are and come up to me and come in and see what's going on in heaven. And so he says, I was caught up at once in deep worship. And oh, I saw a throne set in heaven with one seated on the throne. And then I saw 24 thrones encircling that throne with 24 elders who were seated. And then there was lightning flashes and thunder pulsed from the throne. It wasn't an angel sitting on clouds playing harps. There was this, you know, there was this thunderstorm. There was this, and there was flashes of lightning. And there was people gathered around the throne. And they were, they were then worshipping the, the Lord that was seated upon the throne. And then it said, prowling around the throne were four animals, all eyes, eyes to look ahead, eyes to look behind. And they chanted night and day, never taking a break. Holy, holy, holy is God our master. He is sovereign, strong, the one who was and who is and who is to come. So there's this chanting taking place and this, this, this stuff happening there. And it says, Every time the animals gave glory and honor and thanks to the one seated on the throne, the 24 elders would fall to the ground and prostrate before the throne. And they worshipped the living one. And they threw their crowns at the foot of the throne, chanting, Worthy, O Master, yes, our God, take the glory, take the honor, take the power. You created it all. Wow, this is amazing glimpse into heaven. 
Amazing glimpse. I said, you guys can come back now. You know, right now in heaven, there's no anxiety. There's no anxiety in heaven. There's no worry in heaven. There's no fear. John, in his vision, he ascends and he enters heaven. And what does he see there? He doesn't see the Lord pacing back and forwards, going, what are we going to do? Earth is out of control. What are we going to do? You know, all these people down there, they're running amok. Things are a mess. The universe is falling apart. Creation is falling apart. What are we going to do? No, it says that he sees the Lord seated on the throne, seated on the place of power, seated there in dominion. It says in Psalm chapter 1, the Lord sits in the heavens and laughs. He sits in the heavens and scoffs. He sits there because he has control of all things. He's seated on the throne. And God's not, not pacing back and forward, worrying about what we're doing. He's not anxious or worried about what's going on down here. He's seated on his throne. And then John sees that a worship service is taking place. Holy, 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 Lord God. They're doing church. They're having church. John gets a, a divine picture a design inside into what's going on in heaven and he sees a church service taking place a church service and there's worship and there's people throwing themselves down and there's there's the declaration of holy 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 and there's the uh, the lightning and thunder and flashes and roll all sorts of things happening amazing they're doing church you know when we sang and praised this morning and uh, you know we sing and some of us raise our hands and some of us shout and some of us clap, some of us jump around, some of us get a bit excited. We aren't trying to get in the mood. You know? We're not trying to get in the mood for, for the preaching. Come on, get in the mood. Come on, create a mood, create an atmosphere for us. Now, we're not trying to do that. Some, sometimes that happens and that's good because we enjoy music and melody and stuff. And we aren't trying to build an atmosphere of positive. Come on, I'm alive and well and I feel great. We're not trying to, not trying to do that from a previous message that was. When we worship with all our hearts, we are aligning ourselves with heaven. When we have a worship service like we had here this morning, we're aligning ourselves with heaven. Heaven is having a worship service even as we speak this morning. And we're having a a worship service down here. And there's an alignment take place. And I believe there's an opening of the heaven. And we don't have to say, come up here. But heaven comes down and we experience something of Jesus. We feel something of heaven as we participate. A door opens. And then something in our hearts changes and can shift when heaven happens. Your anxiety, if you are experiencing heaven, there's no anxiety in heaven. And when we align ourselves with heaven, when, when we have an open heaven, when we feel the sense of God's presence in our midst, then anxiety has to go. Anxiety, one of the most powerful things we can do Sunday by Sunday as we come and wrestle with the anxiousness of our world is to come and devote our, give ourselves to worship. Don't forget, don't worry about the person beside you or in front of you or behind you. It's not about them, it's about you and Jesus. It's about you and God. It's about you coming before the throne of God, the throne of heaven and saying, Lord, I thank you. Man, you are the one who was and is and is to come. And I worship you with all of my heart. And if you're distracted down the back, come to the front. Find a little space. Find somewhere that's there and and give yourself a a glimpse of thunder and lightning that can touch your life. Right now, we have an opportunity to give our anxious thoughts to Jesus. Right now. Right now, you can trust that God is on his throne and that things will work out. He's not going to allow you to fall in a heap. He's going to give you His grace. And by His grace, you'll be able to do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And you might come through a little bit battered and bruised. And you might come through the other side. But He says, no, I'm going to, I'm going to take you through. I'm going to take you through. Right now, you can pray and thank God for the wonderful things He's already done. Looking behind you, go, wow, Lord, look at what you've done in my life. Look at these blessings. Look at the stuff that you've done in, in my world. And say, so, Lord, I don't have to be anxious about the future. I can put my times into your hands. I can trust you. I can believe you. I can thank you. And I can pray and give myself to you. And I can say, anxiety, you're not leaving that my, the station. You're not, I'm not going to give you permission to get on those tracks and take me down to that place of anxiety and worry and fear any longer. Can we stand today? We're going to sing you lost your singers what are you playing thank God in the sanctuary and as we do this I don't want you to be thinking about what you're going to do for lunch lunch, is, lunch will come it'll work out 
Don't be thinking about what you're going to do this afternoon. I want you to think in this moment, in this moment of God seated on His throne. And I want you in this moment to allow Him to calm your anxious thoughts, to calm your fears, to calm your worries. Allow Him to to put His hand on your shoulder. Allow Him to look into your eyes and allow Him to say to you, don't worry, it's going to be okay. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, right now. Lord, right now we speak over people's lives. And Lord, we pray that as heaven has touched this piece of earth this morning, that anxiety would go in Jesus' name. Lord, where there's, Lord, a demonic assignment, where there has been spiritual activity, we break its power this morning and we set people free. Lord, we thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit in this place. Lord, we thank you that, uh, Lord, we can trust you that you're at work in our heart and our lives. Lord, you know the beginning from the end. And Lord, you're leading and guiding us through every circumstance. And Lord, nothing is a surprise to you. Lord, nothing catches you by surprise. But Lord, you know and you take us by the hand. And Lord, as we trust in you, Lord, as we cast our cares upon your shoulders, Lord, as we look you in the eyes and we hear your words not to be anxious, Lord, I thank you we respond to that in Jesus' name right now. Jesus, I get, I bless your name. Thank you, Father. just sense God's at work in some hearts this morning. Thank you, Jesus. If you're here this morning and you've never invited Jesus into your world, or perhaps you've done that and you know you've drifted away from what really being a a follower of Jesus should look like, I just want to invite you just in this moment as our eyes are closed, if that's you, you've never invited Jesus, or perhaps you have and you're no longer living how you should, just give me a wave this morning. Just raise your hand. Say, Jeff, that's me. I'd love to pray with you after the meeting. Is there anyone here this morning? Fantastic. So, Father, I thank you right now for every person gathered in this auditorium. Lord, I thank you that you love us, you care for us, and that, Lord, you're outworking your will in each of our lives. Lord, I declare over each of us today that we can trust you, that you are a good God. You're a God to be trusted. And Lord, you care for each one of us so dearly, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray in this coming week that we would have a greater revelation of you. We would understand more of your ways. And Lord, that you would cause us in this week to be singing that song of Bobby McFerrin's, Don't Worry, Be Happy. Let, us, let it be the song of our week, oh God, that we would take it with us and we would realize that it carries real biblical truth behind her, truth for our worlds. Lord, that we won't be anxious, we won't be fearful, we won't be worried, but Lord, we'll trust you in all that's going on. Lord, I thank you for each person here. Watch over us now in this coming week. Let your hand of blessing be upon us, we ask in Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week, free of anxiety, free of fear, and trusting God that He's still outworking His will.